Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, coming to you live from our studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and my home office in Makiki. Today, we welcome back the American Diabetes Association with Development Manager, Amber, Amber Burgos. Welcome, Amber. Hi, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, we're, we're great. We're grateful that you're here to share um, updates and where we're at with American Diabetes here in Hawaii. So before we get started, Amber, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. So I am, as Wendy mentioned, the development manager. So my role between um, American Diabetes Association and Hawaii is to really be the bridge that shares the mission to eliminate diabetes and all of its burdens. Um, so I was actually born and raised on Maui, where I saw my grandma herself struggle with diabetes. And this really inspired me to align with this mission and help more people in Hawaii. Wow. So they got the right person because you're passionate about it. I can hear it in your voice. You're directly affected, as a lot of us are. But, you know, back in the day, people wouldn't talk about it. It was kind of a shh, shh kind of idea. But the more we shed light on it, the more people can realize it and they come out of the closet, so to speak, and share what they're going through. And then they allow you all at the American Diabetes to help them get through this. So what does diabetes look like in our islands, Amber? Diabetes is so prevalent in Hawaii. Um, just statistically, one out of two people in our islands are affected by diabetes, whether it be diabetes itself or pre-diabetes. And unfortunately, this number is actually rapidly growing with over 10,000 new cases of diabetes being diagnosed every year. Um, and not only is this a burden on health, but it tends to be a burden on all aspects of life, um, especially financially, because those with diabetes actually have 2.3% higher medical expenses than those without. And in Hawaii, this costed us $1.5 billion. So you can imagine what a huge number that is. And how much of a burden this really is in Hawaii on our people. Wow, that is a big burden. I mean, I remember when we first, I got started on the board, it was like about 14 years ago. And um, we were just like you on a mission, on a mission. But, you know, we just got to work harder and or smarter, maybe harder and smarter together because the numbers are growing and it's really sad. And people really have to, the light bulb has to go on in everyone. <laughs> And I, I believe, Amber, you have a great job of being the switch. You have to be the one to turn on that light bulb so that they can realize that they can do this, but they need the tools. And that's where you guys come in from the American Diabetes Association. So how does the ADA spread awareness about diabetes in the community? So one way we spread awareness is by really pushing out our diabetes risk test. So one of the issues, of course, is a lack of education about it. People may just not know on the top of their head their symptoms of diabetes. I mean, I'm sure most people don't. So we really try to push out this rest test so people can really measure where they would be at. And we really push out at different community affairs, like health fairs. Um, we also do at different conferences. So what this is, is it's a very accessible, very easy, very quick test anyone can take on their mobile phone. And we usually just have them scan it with their QR code, but they can also go to our website um, to view it as well. So this just layouts is someone's at a low, high or medium risk of having diabetes. And I saw in front of my eyes, so many people are surprised to see that they're at a high risk. Um, but of course we have all the resources they need at our booth right in front of them to respond to that and get the resources and education they need to lower that risk. Wow, and you know guys out there, it is a simple test and it doesn't take a few minutes, but a few minutes and when you fill it out, Yes, like Amber says, their face is like, oh, I didn't know, or oh my gosh, what do I do now, right? And so that's the whole idea, getting to take that simple stress uh, test and a diagnosis of where they are at. And like you said, you now have all that information in packets, or you guys are live physical at the boots, and that's why you're out there in the community sharing this information. So I think we have to get more arms to grab people in to come to the booth so that they can take the test and then you can give them the education. So, you know, Amber, are people receptive to the information when they realize, yes, they're at high risk? Are they willing to listen or do they say, no, 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 I'll, I'll talk to my doctor and walk away? What do you feel? 
Well, it's interesting. I feel like they're always receptive. I mean, because like I said, a lot of people don't really think about it, about measuring the risk. So of course, they're alarmed, you know, when they instantly see it and their mind instantly goes to, how can I lower this now, you know? So like I said, on top of that, they know we are a very credible, you know, resource for this information. And a lot of what we hand out is very detailed and it's very easy to follow for them. So Yes, they are very relieved to see all the resources in front of them and to be able to follow that. Wow, and that's important that you guys have that all right there. And then plus people like you who are passionate about it, you know, um, you're going to just capture their attention and then capture their hearts. And that's when they're more receptive to all of this. So Amber, outside of the risk test, what else does the ADA do in the community to prevent diabetes? Mm -hmm. So we kind of touched on it on our education resources, but I just want to just go a bit deeper and explain further about it. So we really believe at the ADA that education is going to be key to preventing diabetes. Um, so not only do we have such an array of resources from nutrition resources, exercise resources, um, emotional resources to, get, to really guide people with diabetes, but we also um, give out, you know, a library of pamphlets and different information that people can actually obtain online by going to professionalpointdiabetes.org. So this just allows them to search any topic related to diabetes they want, and they'll see a library of educational resources they can um, really refer to. And not only this, but it's also in different languages. So one we have featured is Tagalog. You can see that on the right. On top of that, if people um, want a more personal touch, let's say you're not a community um, market and you're just looking on your laptop for these resources, you can also call 1-800-DIABETES who can directly recommend those for you as well as send some to your actual address. Wow. So, you know, so many are already diagnosed and living mm -hmm. with diabetes. How does the ADA support those already diagnosed and out there? Some of them are struggling. Some of them are not even informed at all, or some of them don't want to be informed. How do you reach them? Yeah, so as you can imagine, upon being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, your instant reaction is to be like, where do I start? It's very overwhelming, you know? There's so many different aspects of your life you have to change. But what we offer to people with type 2 is actually our um, ebook like program, which is designed specifically to give people with type 2 diabetes this guidance they need to really thrive and make better um, decisions to really make sure they're going to be healthy. So this program is actually completely free um, and it's accessible to anyone with internet. And once you log on and sign up for it, you can receive pamphlets that cover topics like food and nutrition, stress and emotions, physical activity, and even staying on track, which is a very important aspect of it all as well. On top of that, you also will have access to our monthly newsletter and um, Ask the Experts Q&A. So this is a program where you can actually submit questions to different endocrinologists and they'll review it um, and give you the answers you may need and might not have accessible to you day to day. So all this is for completely free. And again, it's just a way to guide those who may have type 2 diabetes. Wow. And so, you know, you, you offer them all this education, information, resources, and all of that. But I think the key right now is what resources does the ADA have for nutritional mm -hmm. education? Oh, yeah. And this program itself that I'm going to be going into is not just for those with diabetes. It's for anyone who wants to eat healthy. So it's called our Diabetes Food Hub. So this is actually a website that allows you to just browse recipes. So let's say you're like, tonight I want stir fry. And it's going to generate results that give you healthy, diabetes safe options for the recipe you searched up. Um, not only this, but it lays out things like the time to cook, the different um, ingredients you're going to need. So you can actually filter them by these assets. So if you only have 10 minutes to cook your stir fry, you can just directly search that up. Not only this, but it also allows you to generate grocery lists based on the um, ingredients. So this just takes it a step further to making sure you can really execute healthy eating and just really making it easier for everyone while giving them the array of choices they may want. Wow. So it's all out there. It's just a matter of them saying, yes, I am diabetic. Yes, I need help. And thank you for the help. I will source your resources. And so that's the whole idea, right, is getting them to receive it and act, um, get involved with it. So I was wondering, is there a support team 
to hold the diabetic community accountable. A support team to hold the diabetic team. I'm sorry, can mm -hmm. you elaborate on that question for me, please? Yeah, so like, so say the Sally was diagnosed with diabetes and um, I met some people and they said, hey, I asked them, so well, what's your lifestyle like? Has it changed since the diagnosis? And they said, no. I said, well, why not? And they said, oh, I don't know where to start. I said, well, I'm sure they assigned you a team around you, like a nutritionist, a dietitian, endocrinologist, et cetera. But now some of them just won't go or they'll say they'll go, but they don't do anything but not do it. And so how do we hold them accountable for taking the steps that you guys provide for them? That's a great question. Well, I think one of the steps into, you know, making sure they're really held accountable is to be surrounded by people um, with a similar you know, condition at them. So those with diabetes, so they can all be on the same track as them. So, you know, with that being said, we really do try to unite the community and create this, you know, sense of unity. Uh, actually at our camp, which we'll go more into later, all of the parents ended up joining a support group um, based with our medical professionals at camp together. So um, there's definitely ways in which, you know, to hold people accountable by just really uniting with one another. Wow, and I feel that the the energy is right, right, right now with you and um, your passion. Um, I'm sure all things are possible, and you're making it a greater um, environment to be in versus something that is so mysterious and scary, especially for the newly diagnosed. So, congratulations to you, Amber. I love your knowledge and your enthusiasm. So keep it up because that's how you get the information into people's hearts and bodies and families. And that's what is so needed because we need to make a change. Mm -hmm. So how does the ADA help Hawaii's medical professionals? With oh, yeah, situation? sure. So, yeah, not only do we try to help our community, but we also try to target the very systems that are impacting those with diabetes. And, of course, as you guys can imagine, it's the medical system is a major, you know, player in that. Um, we do this in multiple ways, but the one I actually want to shine light on today because I think it's very relevant especially to Hawaii healthcare professionals, is our diabetes is primary program. So um, the purpose of this program is to really make sure that our healthcare providers are receiving the most up-to-date information surrounding best practices for those with diabetes, as well as diabetes-related technology. Um, because this is very difficult for our primary care providers to keep up with everywhere in America, just because everything is just so rapidly changing. So the American Diabetes Association acknowledges it and in response have created this system of modules, which our diabetes um, professionals and just general primary care professionals can take that lay out various topics related, again, to best practices for those with diabetes. And the incentive here is once they take this, they actually can receive credits to renewing their um, different licenses. So it really makes sure that they can spend their time getting this renewal while also spending their time getting the most up-to-date information surrounding diabetes and thus make for, you know, healthier patients that are really receiving the care they deserve. Wow. So it's a food service, food team. You've got the ADA, not just mentoring and educating the community or the diagnosed diabetic, but also the medical professional who can provide the support team mm -hmm. that you guys are encouraging. Sometimes hand, well, left hand doesn't talk to the right hand. And so you guys might want this, but they have no idea or time or uh, they don't have programs to implement, but I'm sure that they can come along your side, the ADA, and uh, I'm sure that you guys will build together. Mm -hmm. And the main purpose is to better um, the, the awareness of the patient towards wellness. And so it takes a team. It really, truly takes a whole team. So how does uh, ADA help with Hawaii's keiki that are diagnosed with diabetes? Yeah, that's a wonderful question because this is really one of the main pillars of the American Diabetes Association. It's helping children with diabetes. Um, so we start at school, really. Um, so we actually have this program called Safe at School, which is a seminar conference which is hosted by a lot of Hawaii medical professionals. And the purpose of this is to make sure that our schools in Hawaii are really abiding by the laws that are set in place to make sure students with diabetes um, do not face discrimination, are not challenged in the learning environment, and can really thrive in the school setting. So this year, we actually hosted this conference and featured someone named Maximum Speed, who himself is a child with diabetes, who is also an athlete. 
So we really got to hear his perspective as a child in school, um, how to really solidify children's safety in school from Hawaii's medical professionals and additionally his parents. So how to, you know, feel safe and calm while your child is at school. So it's just an all encompassing way to make sure that our keiki are going to be safe at school in Hawaii. Wow, and I've always loved that name, Max Speed, you know, <laughs> and with the help of the ADA, even despite the fact of the diagnosis of Max, he can still be, you know, and, and reach the Max Speed because mm -hmm. nothing's going to stop him. And this is so key. And maybe the parents, the name came to him because he will be a messenger and a messenger of hope for the diabetic child growing into the youth, growing into the diabetic adult, that nothing should stop and you should continue life with the full thrust like everyone else. So I know that in Hawaii, um, we had many, for many years, a uh, keiki camp for the mm -hmm. diabetic keiki. And then it stopped and I know it's up and running again and very excited, excitedly running with a lot of success. So can you share with me a bit about Camp Heoloke Keiki this year? Yeah, I'd love to. So um, yeah, Camp was previously paused because of COVID. Um, but yeah, this year we actually had our camp. And just to give more background, you know, kids with type 1 diabetes are really, you know, up against a lot of obstacles. Um, for one, you know, being child in Hawaii, in such a small knit community, you can feel really isolated having something like diabetes, um, not having friends who have it. It's not going to be very common. Additionally, having to always monitor your physical symptoms, what you're eating. It's really, you know, extra experiences someone without diabetes may not have to go through. Um, so the purpose of this camp is to A, help them better manage their diabetes and, you know, really help them improve their communication skills. And in addition to that, we really want to make sure they're bonding with other kids who may have diabetes. Um, forming friendships with people who, you know, on some level can really understand them. And so we actually had our camp this year, as I mentioned, and it was wonderful because we're coming out of COVID. We actually had to switch the format a bit. So we invited parents and guardians to attend as well. And this just added an extra layer of, you know, benefits for them too. So at the camp, these children got to participate in about four hours of physical activity a day. Um, they were completely monitored by a staff of medical professionals. And yeah, I even myself got to see kids being like, wow, I finally found a friend who truly understands what I'm going through, which was really touching. And on another level, the parents themselves um, had moments where they would get into groups just to share their vulnerabilities. And they all ended up shedding a tear because, you know, something that's easy to overlook is how stressful, you know, having a child with diabetes can be on the parent and how much anxiety that can create for them. So they got to really, you know, find a community of people who understand what they're going through as well and share tips and how they manage things. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, they all ended up joining a support group together. So wow. yeah, this camp definitely, you know, accomplished its goals. And on top of that, what was unique is that it was the only camp in America that was 100% free for everyone to attend. Um, and that was all because of the generosity of the Lions Club of Hawaii. So shout out to them. That was just amazing to see. Wow. Yeah, and that is so key. Um, I, I, wanna, uh, I want you to touch upon, you know, real quickly, what is the life of a diabetic child? Because people don't know the, the situation of a diabetic child about the sugars and then how they can drop and, you know, pump up and go down and up and mm -hmm. down. People don't understand that. They just think, oh, diabetic, you can't have sugar and you'll be fine. You know, so just real quickly touch upon the day in a life of a diabetic child. Yeah, sure. So what I always say is having, you know, diabetes as a child is no easy feat at all. Yes. Uh, so you constantly have to be aware of the physical activity you're undergoing. And based on that, you have to constantly be, you know, very attentive to the physical experience. Um, physical symptoms you're experiencing on top of that, you know, in addition, you're going to have to really keep track of what you're eating. So it's a lot of attention to detail. It's a lot of, you know, pressure to really make sure you are being careful with the way you're moving, which, you know, as a child who wants to be free and just let loose and do all sorts of things, it can be really difficult. And again, it can be very isolating. Um, that's a huge thing. Um, it can be very isolating and lead to depression just because, you know, if you're the only child in your class with diabetes, maybe you can't participate or eat things your friends are eating. And 
yeah, that feeling can really, you know, manifest negative ways. So a program like this where they can really find friends and, you know, connect with them years on and talk about their experiences really, you know, eliminates those feelings of difference and right. you know, adds them to uh, connectivity. And then, you know, that question, why me? Or, you know, it's why me, right? And so they feel isolated, like you said, and then, yes, it can cause to a lot of uh, psychological issues because they can't do other things, you know, or kids don't understand why they can't. And they just say, you know, you, they, they get bullied. And so, you know, I even heard from a, a football player and um, he was truly a, a diabetic and adult. I think he was a type one, but he would have to, every time he went on the, the field and he was playing for NFL, and every time he went on the field, he'd have to come off and his coaches would have to check his sugars, you know, because of the activity and what he had eaten previously. But he would be constantly going off on and off the field. And the, the coaches, he had a great staff around him because they were very aware. And um, I guess he was so valuable a player that they really gave him that attention that he needed to manage his diabetes uh, on the field and did a fabulous job. So people, it's like a hidden disease. And, you know, you know, when you got to get your insulin or your, your pills, it's not it's not out there. Like, you don't have to take uh, seven weeks of chemo. You just have to quietly go to the side, get your insulin into your body, get your sugars right, and then continue on. But only you can are, are aware of it because you can feel the difference when your body is not responding to where mm -hmm. you're at. So it's, it's, it's a very tough disease, and it's yeah. very isolating. It is. Yeah, and another layer too, um, again, because there can be a lack of education about diabetes. People assume, oh, you have diabetes, you may have made the wrong choices with your diet and your exercise. While a lot of these kids with type one, you know, it's just something they develop, something they had no control over. So they also can face, you know, ridicule for that. Um, just again, because of the lack of, you know, proper education resources. Right. So definitely difficult. And like I said, no easy feat at all. Wow. And thank, thank you, Lord, for bringing back the Keiki camp oh. where they can feel, you know, with their peers and the parents can also hang out with mm -hmm. other diabetic parents, uh, kids of diabetic kids. Um, it really helps to have that support group and say, you know, like we're not in it alone and they can call somebody up because now they have a network of friends, adults and the kids. Mm -hmm. So, so touche for ADA for fighting to bring it back to Hawaii. I'm so grateful for it. Um, I was wondering, can you just inform us, how can a diabetic keiki get signed up for next year or for the camps uh, upcoming? Okay, so actually what I would recommend is emailing me. Um, I'd share my email right now if that's okay. That's um, fine. aburgos at diabetes.org. So I can keep them in the loop of all different resources surrounding camp, as well as, you know, show them other opportunities to be more involved. So I would highly recommend that. So just to make sure, you know, they're on our first priority list when we have, you know, our website going and all our information resources for next year and us. Very good. And I know they're running the um, the American Diabetes website title on the on the screen, so they can also access that and then tap into you directly as well. So I know that we have, um, I know we're already starting, although it's still in 2022, but in 2023, we're having our step out walk for diabetes. So how can members of the community get signed up, get walking. We need money, we need bodies, we need everything. So give a shout out. Go ahead, Amber. Yeah, so I just wanted to go over quickly about Step Out and just more information about it in general. So this is the way of the American Diabetes Association of really connecting members of our community with diabetes with one another, as well as resources they may need to thrive. So just to you know, shine a spotlight, we have a wellness village, which is filled with different local companies that are there for those with diabetes and that can really provide them with more information they need, um, support groups, et cetera, that can help them thrive in Hawaii. Um, not only this, but we have a structure where you can start a team with your friends, your coworkers, your family, all, and actually you know, be a bit competitive, try to be that number one team and based on that, get various different incentives and even access to different areas on the actual event. So. I just highly recommend everyone to look into it and really participate to show that you align with our mission, as well as a way to connect, you know, members of your family and just members in your social group with one another for a day full of good fun, honestly. So um, you can get involved with this. We're looking for volunteers. We're also looking for people who are interested in sponsoring to show they really align with the ADA, 
as well as just, you know, generally anyone who wants to spread word about it. So you can email me at aburgos at diabetes.org for that information. Or you can just directly sign up on our website if, you know, you're just pumped right now and you want to make a team, go to diabetes.org slash step out high 23. And yeah, again, feel free to reach out to me if you want any more information at, about step out, but um, all funds raised would go to furthering our mission. So our advocacy, our research, um, as well as our, you know, just program delivery like CAP. Yes, and you know, you guys make it so easy because you go to the website. I'm computer illiterate, and I have <laughs> done this for many years where you go there and you just click on sign up a team, and then you, you can name your team. And then all you got to do is if you're a Facebook or a social media person, right, you blast it out there. And then people will, I mean, surprisingly, they just go on and they donate money directly to your site. And you rack up, I mean, set a goal, a lofty goal. I mean, I would always say $1,000, you know, and that's even uh, conservative. You can say even more than that because I'm not sure, but um, can I just ask, Amber, are we having a champions program? Oh, yeah. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be the specialty. I'm, you, I'm in the past you, uh, at the champions tent. Mm -hmm. And all that means is put it on social media. Back it up, refresh it all, as often as you can, and people start donating money towards ADA. And when you hit a thousand dollars or more, and I'm not sure of the tier structure, so I know about the Champions program. Mm -hmm. And once you hit that, then you get privileged to come to a special area, and we get special acknowledgments for you that you are a champion. And then uh, we give you sometimes, you know, a cup of coffee, an extra, an, a rose, or I'm not sure what we're going to give you this year. It's all <laughs> surprise uh, to be uh, announced, but it's always something that recognizes all your efforts. And we really mahalo all of you for doing this. And everyone comes to my tent and say, how do I do that? How, how can I be a champion? So I always try to get the word out early so they, they don't feel left out because it's kind of easy, huh, Amber, to be a champion? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, everyone, not everyone, but most people, one in two people in Hawaii are some way touched by diabetes. Yes. Um, so, you know, everyone really wants to help this mission. Everyone cares about our community in Hawaii and, you know, sees yes. this as such a prevalent issue. So, yeah, this is just such a good, you know, way to get involved and really stop diabetes in Hawaii. Right. So everyone listening to this and then some, we expect you out there. It's a beautiful day, beautiful morning for a walk. And then to get educated is what our main goal is to educate the community and to just get you out there in this environment and be grateful for all that we have and to support those that are still uh, living with the, uh, type one and type two. But um, for now, Amber, We've run out of time, so I'd like to say mahalo to you, Amber Burgos, from the American Di Diabetes Association, for your passion for helping Hawaii lower our numbers through programs, resources, and research. So we'll be back in two weeks with more of Taking Your Health Back from Wendy Lowe. Aloha and mahalo, Amber. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.